The last few videos I shared show the results of a playing card data set I created two weeks ago. I created that data set over a period of several days and training took between 1 and 10 hours depending on the network configuration and the network dimensions that I was testing. What I haven't shown yet is the data set itself. So I'm going to show you Darkmark. This is what I use to train all my neural networks uh, and it's how I get all my annotations done. At the moment I have a regex filter set up that brings my images down from 7600 to 48 uh, just so we can concentrate on just a few images for the purpose of this video. I'm going to press F on the keyboard to bring up the filter dialog and I'm actually going to limit it more. So right now we're at 48. I'm going to remove empty images and I'm going to remove non-annotated images. That brings us down to 17. Perfect. So this is the main editor window in Darkmark. I can use the arrow keys to move around. If I press the letter C or enter on the keyboard, it brings up this menu here. So these are all the classes that are available for this particular neural network. Um, every single class has a number assigned to it. And that number lets you switch uh, when you're annotating. Like if I press 2, 3, 4, 5, I can, I can change what that object is. So if I want to make it a spade, I know that spade is 15, so that's control 5. There you go, it's now a spade again. Next thing is uh, zoom, the zoom feature. So plus and minus on the keyboard will let you zoom in and out of an image. Or you can press space to jump to the previous zoom setting. So if I press space right now, there you go, you can see I'm at 500% uh, and you can see that my annotations are really tight on all the objects that I have. This is intentional. I don't leave white space between the bounding box and the object that I am detecting. I want to know the exact object and I make sure that I'm right up against it. I can move around, press space again. You can see that every annotation is done the same way. This is important. You want to be consistent with your annotations. Uh, if we move around, there you go. This one's a good example. So Jack, Diamond, and here's the face. So when I'm annotating um, the face cards, Jack, Queen, King, I told myself I want all the skin area of the face and all the skin area of the neck. So you can see my annotation here makes sure it makes sure that I have all of the neck, all the face, and then the other rule I told myself is I want any hat or crown that they are wearing. So my annotation goes up right up against the edge of where the crown is. And that's what decides exactly how big the annotation is going to be. If I go to the opposite end of the card, I've annotated it the same way. I make sure that I get all the skin in the neck and face and the corners of the hat. The diamond includes all the diamond. The J here, I include all sides of the J. There's a king that's visible here. If... Uh, an object is partly off the screen. Uh, I may annotate it or not, depending on how much it's off the screen. If it's easy to tell what it is, like in this case, it's easy to see that it's the letter K, then I annotate it. If it's less than half, then I probably would skip it. Uh, here's another example of a face card. You can see I made sure that I grabbed the face area and the hair on top. There's no crown here. And uh, the club and the five is really simple as well. 
And blurry objects, I typically skip. I don't annotate it. If it's blurry, it becomes too difficult. Like if I zoom in here, I don't know exactly what to grab. Yeah, I could have grabbed this and I could have said that's the number two. But is that really visible as the number two? Not really. And so blurry objects I leave alone. And it turns out that Dark Mark actually does a pretty good job uh, even when I skip the blurred objects in the final video, when I look at it frame by frame, it still is detecting some of the blurred areas. Once you've annotated all of your images, if it makes sense, and in this case it does, uh, for this data set with the cards, I go to images and I tell it I want to rotate 90, 180, 270 degrees. Right now I'm going to cancel, uh, and that way um, all of my images get rotated by whatever amount I selected. That gives me more images to train with. Once that's done, create darknet files. And I have other videos where I explain all the different fields that are available in this window. Uh, there's, there's lots of information here. But this is uh, all of the videos that I've been posting lately with the cards have been done this way, uh, with the exception of, of course, which configuration file I'm using. Uh, like if I go YOLO v4 tiny over here, that's what this would look like. And that's about it. At that point, I start training. It takes, you know, it may take an hour, two hours, depending on the size and the exact configuration file I used. Hope this helps and uh, come see us on the Darknet YOLO Discord if you need additional assistance.